Thank you for joining us wherever you are. This podcast episode is brought to you by the Old Ways Actual Play Team. This Actual Play uses the 7th edition Call of Cthulhu tabletop role-playing game rules by Chaosium. This Actual Play is performed by adults and in an adult setting. While we try very hard to stick to language for all ages, listeners should know that this podcast may include mature themes. All content, including names, places, events, companies, and etc., that may bear resemblance to entities living or dead, is strictly coincidental. My name is Michael Diamond, and for tonight's game, I will be your keeper. Thank you for joining us again on another episode of the Old Ways Podcast. I am your keeper, Keeper Michael, and we return to Mask of Namathotep in our Kenya chapter. Uh, and as we like to do at the top of the show, we'd like to thank you, listener, and especially you, the Patreon supporter. If you'd like to support us on Patreon, you can at patreon.com slash the Old Ways Podcast. Check us out on YouTube and help us get to 1,000 subscribers. We are nearing that mark very shortly, and we're going to give away an amazing prize pack when we do. So, yeah, jump on. Let's have some fun. Speaking of fun, I'm going to get to cast introductions to my right. This is Tiffany, and I play Maeve O'Shea, and uh, welcome to the upcoming shit show. I thought you were going to say welcome to the jungle. That We'll save that intro for uh, the, another time uh, to Miss O'Shea's right. This is Morgan. I play Lillian Lane, and my father is not going to be happy I was arrested. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've got like a laundry list to read to him. Don't worry. <laughs> At the end of the table. This is Jake. I'm playing Jack Doyle. And on this week's episode of Cops, we're going to. <laughs> we're going to find out just uh, how, um, yeah, just how nimble your um, tongue might be. Uh, to well, Mr. Doyle's well, right. Uh, this is uh, Lonnie and I play Robert Drummond. And um, well, it's technically not lying to the cops if everything I tell them is the truth. Hmm. Truth. That, uh, it's, that word's going to get a workout this session, guaranteed. <laughs> Uh, to Mr. Drummond's right. Uh, this is James, and I'll be playing Dr. Sigmund Tartenbach, and <clears throat> seems like I'm the only one who was not taken to prison by a cab. <laughs> no, no, uh, your uh, conveyance will come shortly thereafter, and last but most certainly not least. Uh, this is Alex playing Sam Perron, who at this point is more scar tissue now than man. That's true. That's true. Uh, so speaking of the doctor and uh, Sam, we're going to start our episode... Uh, zoomed in a little closely on two men playing chess uh, up until the wee hours of the morning. We'll say it's about 1 a.m. by the time you and Starrat are about at a, at a good stopping point. No, uh, no winner, no loser just yet, um, but uh, the two of you have traded many stories now. Um, and you realize just by the simple metronome that is that regulator clock mm. on the wall that Sam's pain medication likely is going to begin wearing off soon. And it might be a good idea to check on your patient. You'll have to forgive me for a moment. Sting, go over to where Sam is laying. Crush down next to him, see how he's doing. You can tell with the, the sort of pallor of his skin tone that he's lost a fair amount of blood. Um, and so while all of the additional wound work and we'll just say not dissection, but just careful removal of materia has been made, he's lost an, an awful lot of blood. And uh, Dr. Starrett has uh, IV'd him with some, but that's, um, that's only the beginning of the road for Sam. Mm, well, it will have to do for now. <laughs> Sam? Uh, wait for Sam to wake up on his own, because I'm sure it won't be too horribly long. Yeah, it's not terribly long. I mean, Sam, for your part, waking out of waking up out of a, a, a drug-induced, <laughs> uh, not coma per se, but just being having a lot of painkillers pushed into your system, um, they only last so long, and eventually you get thirsty and. It's not like Nairobi gets any less hot. Um, it does cool off a little bit at night, but you've been through the ringer at this point. Well, lucky for me, my shirt was probably destroyed, so. Yeah, it's true. <clears throat> no, no excess layers. You know, 
I, I guess as I as I as I come to my senses, I think I acknowledge the fact that somewhere in the darkness there is a lurking cat god that is giggling to herself about my brush with death and the cascade of misfortune that resulted in me getting blasted through a curtain. Um, So, for my own edification, I remind myself to always take a second look around (laughs) because you never know who's sitting in the dark with a shotgun. Seems reasonable. Mm -hmm. Doc gently puts his shotgun away so the Sam can't see it anymore. You don't own a shotgun. Um, do I, if, I, if I wake up, do I see the, do I see the doctor there? Yes, you do. Stand, uh, standing nearby. Maybe not over you so much, but, but nearby. Close enough that you could talk to him. Did I pass out? You've been asleep for quite a while, Sam. <sighs> where, where are we? We are with your good friend, the doctor. This is actually now also my good friend. Oh, we're still here. Are we, are we okay? What, what happened last night? Where, where is everyone? Ah, uh, well, unfortunately, I have not heard from them. They went to, hold a, to the hotel to get our things. Oh, God. And I have heard nothing from them <laughs> since. Uh, Reginald. Reginald? The, the, owner, the owner, the guy that we saw at the... Um, help me, yes, help, uh, help me up, Sigmund. Mm, yes, I gently help Sam sit up. Mm. I seem to him oh, remember him being a vicious little... Prick. <laughs> um, I will inspect my bandages and give my clothes like a once over just to see what's left. Um, your bandages are very likely, I would say, in some of the best order you've seen. You you don't know which one of them worked on you or if it was both. Um, you know who it wasn't? It the- wasn't Lillian. I know what Lillian's bandages look like, and these are way cooler. Yeah, these are really well done. Uh, that doesn't mean that your midsection doesn't fucking hurt. Yeah, I'll probably I I I will I'll probably linger on my um, my markings for a bit and just kind of remind myself that uh, you know my work is is not done here <laughs> apparently, uh, and I will uh, get my pack of once over. You're not missing anything at this point. Um, They've you're not you're shirtless, yeah. Um, and but they've left you you know pants, shoes, boots, etc. Whatever you're wearing. Oh, uh, where's uh, Starret? Ah, uh, he's in the other room. I think I have him in five moves. Perhaps it has been a while since I have played. Have him? Have? What did you do to the doctor? <laughs> It has been a surgical strike, dear boy. He put up a good fight, so. Doc smiles. We are playing a game of chess, the game of kings. Oh, oh, okay. I will. I will hug Sigmund. <laughs> <laughs> you are fine, uh, or you rather you will be, but you cannot. Be. Mm, you must take it easy. I'll, look, I'll take it easy. We just need to figure out where the others are. You have misplaced a lot of your blood. Have I? Is that what that was? <clears throat> a bit here and there, yeah. It explains the, the whooshing sound that's going on all, every time I move. I, I would imagine, yeah, you probably feel like an underinflated tire. But you have, you have medicine for that, right? I do. It takes about three days to administer, and it's called water and bed rest, but... We don't have time for any of those things, right? Uh, now, question so. for the question for the keeper. Um, did I get any magic yes. points back and all that? Uh, three. Okay. I'm not gonna burn them. I'm just curious what happened. <laughs> all right, let's uh, help me. Help me. Help me get to start it. Uh, of course. Come help Sam out into the other room and put him in the chair that the doc was previously sitting in, and then Doc uh, busies himself with small nibbles or whatever that the you know the other doctor has offered just to give him some blood sugar and get his blood up <laughs> the three cells banging into each other again oh, so that there is um actually quite a bit of reasonably good african fruits here mm. that will put that sugar directly back into his blood system doc enjoys a few dates nothing yeah. like a good date 
for sure. Uh, Starrett's looking you over, Sam, from behind his desk. You see there's a, there's a chess set in the middle of his desk. There's a couple of, you know, tumbler glasses nearby that look like they've been used. Um, he looks tired, um, but he also appears to have, you know, he hasn't dimmed. Uh, I'm truly sorry. I, I didn't want to burden you with this. But you have. I have. All I can do is apologize and thank you. Well, I am certain that um, there are reasons for the things that you've done. I am not certain that God would agree with them. After what um, Sigmund has discussed with me tonight. But I am not your judge on this earth. Oh, I get that. But as far as people whose judgment I would concern myself with, uh, I wouldn't ask you to agree or condone or even forgive anything that we've done. It's not my place to sit in judgment of you. Uh, that would be my job. <clears throat> Wait, we'll, we'll do our best to get out of your, to get out of your hair. Uh, we just, I just need to get an idea as to where our friends may have gone. Yes, what little hair I have left. <laughs> well, uh, from what I understand, they were headed back to the hotel that you were staying at. Now, we have been here in haven't moved much except for the pieces on this table. So if the two of you are prepared to attempt to move uh, outside the mission here, then you'll need to be careful, especially with those wounds. Dear Doctor, do you have perhaps a um, wheeled chair that I may utilize? I do. Wunderbar. That would be most appreciative. I don't. I don't think that'll be necessary. It's. It is not a question of whether you can walk, Sam. It is a question as to whether they will be looking for someone in a wheeled chair. Speaking of, um, I'm not as concerned with them knowing who I am as much as you stick out like a sore doctor around here, Doctor. Hmm. Everything about you is is inconspicuous, or is is conspicuous. And gestures to the white suit, pants, and the slightly blood stained shirt. Yeah, and I was going to say, I don't know what you're talking about. If we could just have a few moments to prepare to prepare some things, uh, Doctor. I, I think I think helping you get to a place where we can get you less noticeable is a bit more important than putting me in a chair. Hmm. I do have a few um, clothing options here if you would like to freshen up. I would be most appreciative. All right. We are a mission, so we do take donations. I am a beggar and therefore cannot be a chooser. <laughs> and a Doc fishes out whatever money he has in his wallet at this point from his last <laughs> re-up at the bank and uh, leaves a... Size, not a sizable, but for the time, you know, five, ten dollars donation. That's pretty good for them in this area, especially. You fish out some of the last money you have yep. from like inside your shoe. Yep. <laughs> yeah, Doc is getting uh, pretty, pretty desperate, but uh, eh, it's just money. Uh, you're afforded some fresh clothes, nothing in any way, shape, or form trendy, um, but uh, reasonable white or cream colored shirts, uh, clean is the order of the day. A question about the doctor. I don't know if I've ever asked this. What does he look like in the like face haircut? What is what is the doctor's description? Mustache. Uh, it's probably not a goatee. Glasses. Yeah, he's usually actually pretty clean cut. Mm -hmm. So tell you what, doctor. If we want to be totally inconspicuous, I have an idea. I'm going to need you to sit down. Doc gets a troubled and slightly bemused look and sits down. <laughs> I go through my bag and I take out a razor. And I flip it open like a nice, nice, nice solid click. Um, and then I approach the doctor with a big smile on my face. Well, I always assumed it would be someone I know, but I didn't think it would be you, Sam. 
and I, I, you know, very gently kind of pat him on the top of the head, and then I lop a huge chunk of his hair off. Ah, I see, and I'm glad that um, that is where we were going with that. Um, I'll take a, a thin piece of gauze out, and I'll use that and a bit of glue to basically. I'm going to cut all the doctor's hair off and make him a beard out of his own hair. You giving me the gift of beard? The the coolest beard. Okay, so go ahead, Sam, and give me a disguise roll. I thought Chuck Norris was the only one who could give out the gift of beard. That is a 39 under 89. A 39 under 89. That is a hard success. I am going to play a hand of fate for you, Sam, in your favor. Oh, well, thank you. And I'm going to upgrade that to an extreme success. Hell yeah. You fit the beard to the doctor sort of made of his own hair. It's a it's a dark beard. It's very um it comes off very pointed. Not necessarily intentionally, but but for you, Sam, it's just sort of how the, the hair ends up falling. Mm-hmm. Um, you realize that he looks strikingly a lot like Vladimir Lenin now. Mm. Oh, comrade. <laughs> duh duh. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I shave his head, like, to the scalp. Um, well, Doc's never had his head shaped, so since there's no going back at this point, he just lets Sam do the thing and enjoys the experience. And once I finish up, I will, uh, I'll, I'll spin the doctor around so we can look in a mirror and, and kind of just gesture at his beard, at what, he's, what he has to show us now. You look in the mirror, Doctor, you see Vladimir Lenin. <laughs> <laughs> My God! <laughs> Oh, fool. I could I could lead a nation looking like this. Probably not anywhere good, but I still... It's quite distinguished, Doctor. I think you look great. I will take a rather tightly bundled... Um, pat, bund- well, tightly, tightly wrapped bundle out of my bag and a hat. And I will be reassuming my, uh, my police uniform uh, outfit. Because okay. um, um, hopefully neither one of us are people that anybody's looking for now. I wouldn't think so, but you never know. You never know. But I do take a moment to shine the shoes again. Okay. You take a few moments to get yourself prepared. And you are now in a policeman's uniform with a, a well, a very different looking doctor next to you. Uh, Dr. Starrett, I really, as much as I appreciate your hospitality, I really hope we never have to bother you again. The doctor sort of draws in a fairly deep breath and looks to the both of you and says, I was put on earth to help mankind in any way I could. That's my purpose. If that means that you and I meet again and you need help, then you're here because you're supposed to be. The mission isn't about one person. It's about everyone who walks through the door under their own power or not. Well, I have little to offer, but um, for our part in this, know that we are going to do our best to to stop what's happening, to stop what's coming. Well, someone needs to. Uh, Doc says he has you in five, by the way. I just kind of turn around and move out of the office. Generous, (laughs) but... (laughs) Stands and shakes, uh, Doc stands and shakes the doctor's hand, the other doctor's hand. Well, it looks like the game will continue. Expect a letter from me in a few weeks. It is good. It has been good to speak with you, Doctor. Yes, uh, take care of uh, our patient. Of course. Do you take care of this place? You are doing good work here, and I appreciate it. Mm. I will. I'm, I'm going to get some rest before the sun comes up. Please do. And yeah, so Doc and Sam hit the streets. <laughs> Where are the two of you heading then? We have to check the hotel. Okay, there's. Uh, you surely, surely do. We will. Ca- yeah, I agree. We should check near the hotel around and see what is going on. So arrival at the hotel for the two of you is a little strange. Um, you get the feeling, Sam, like something happened here. You see a lot of tire tracks Mm -hmm. in the dirt in the road out front, but 
it's not just the tire tracks, it's all of the footprints. Like there was nighttime activity here, maybe an hour or so ago. The hotel was mostly dark. Well, this does not bode well, Sam. Is it morning now? It is not morning. Oh, okay. It's like 1.30 in the morning. Oh, okay. I thought it was like morning, morning. Sorry. It's mm -hmm. like middle oh, yeah. of the night. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I thought I had a bit more time. Okay, I will... Uh, I would definitely have made sure to give myself an extra layer of protection so I don't bleed into this nice white uniform. Mm -hmm. Look at all this, Doc. Something, something, something happened here. Look at all these tracks coming from what, the west. I'm more concerned of the fact that the lights in the hotel are off, Sam. I mean, it is. If our friends were inside, the lights would be on, yeah. Uh, I look up at where their rooms are. They're all dark. Where's the staff entrance in the hotel? Um, you're not sure. You'd have to look around for it. I do. Um, strolling about. Just, uh, you know, being inconspicuous. Yeah. Basically, Doc wants to just kind of take in the situation, look at the staff entrance, see if there are any staff members nearby, like having a cigarette, <laughs> you know, taking a break, that kind of a thing. Doesn't want to interact with them directly, but if he could... Yeah, I, I guess I would just say... Um... To not belabor the, the yeah. point about the yeah. hotel and whatnot. Um, unlike the current hotels of our age, they're, the foyers, the spaces are not open 24 hours a day. Staff aren't meandering or having smoke breaks at 1.30 in the morning. Mm. Um, so likely everybody is asleep. That's what you would figure. Okay. Um, you do find a back kitchen or back staff entrance. To Sam. Oh, I, I would just be following the doctor. I mean, at this point, if... Us being conspicuous is kind of pointless because at, um, he's walking with a cop. So for any, for any number of reasons, we could be out here. Um, right. Yeah. So he points to a, a door. Do I know which room? Is, I don't know which rooms are theirs. Which room? I'll ask the doctor. Which room is uh, Drummond's? You probably remember. It's upstairs. Yeah. Figure out roughly which window is his. And, it's, yeah. That one over I just, there. I'm yeah. thinking like the most paranoid, least likely to be drinking tonight kind of person. So I'm going to find that window and I'm going to pitch little rocks at it. So, yeah, you throw a couple of pebbles at it, Sam. Um, you don't break any windows by any means, but you do wrap them two or three times. Uh, and there's just no answer. Shit, they're not here. I don't think they are. Which does not, as I said, board well, huh? Where do all the tracks seem to converge and then go? They seem to converge at, at, at near the front of the hotel. And then the, the cars seem to go one way and then a lot of the like after a while you get a chance that i won't make you make a track roll because sure. you have such a high track skill just your track is more than high enough to figure this out even in the dark um because there are some lights and enough in the area right it's not pitch black out the cars arrive from the east and then go back west a lot of the footprints sort of seem to converge from both east and west, but then eventually move west like the tracks for the automobiles do. Let's let's head that way and see where all the all these people, wherever they were going, were heading toward uh that would put them closer to the like the city center, right? Like the Yeah. Been been there. Mm-hmm. I'll take my I'll take my torch out too, just to really, really make it clear to people that they should stay out of our way. And people do. There aren't many people on the street at all. Uh, and speaking of people not on the street, the rest of our investigators are definitely not on the street because they are in, we'll just say, um, private rooms. So the four of you get brought into a single holding area. Now, this is not a jail cell. It is essentially a vestibule. After that, you get taken two by two into a room for questioning, essentially. Um, the trick is, it seems to be anyway, that they're going to question you when the police and the detectives arrive. That's what they tell you. 
Um, they tell you this a couple of times over a series of a few hours. They never ask you if you want legal counsel. For those of you with a law skill, as some of you might have, probably come to the understanding that you don't know the legal system here and what rights you may or may not have. Did they search us when we came in? Uh, no. No, they have not searched your persons. So they're not tech, they're not arresting us and they're not technically detaining us. We're aiding them with their inquiries. Right. You have been asked to come to the police station for questioning. You right. have complied. Yeah. Um, they have not talked about placing you under arrest. You know a lot of those like legal terms from the U.S. legal system. Mm -hmm. The big concern, the unknown in your head, Jack, is some of them might not apply here. Right. And you don't have a lawyer. And if they do arrest you, what happens? They do their best, ladies, to make you comfortable. Water, coffee, etc. Um, gentlemen, you don't necessarily get all the same creature come. You have a place. You have a place to smoke. Right. I've been in a cell before. You have. Um, this isn't a cell. That's the thing, right? right? It's yeah. an interview room. Um, but when they leave the interview room, um, this is something you would know, Jack, just by having walked into the room. Um, you know that there's a there's a lock on that door. Right. And so you're likely not leaving the room unless you're leaving with them. So you wait and wait and it gets a little, a little tense after a while because you've been up all that adrenaline from the tea house is totally worn off by now. You're likely exhausted physically and round about maybe 2 AM. The, uh, one of the sergeants comes in. Uh, to your room, Miss Lane, Miss O'Shea. And he says that um, they've been unable to get in contact with the head of detectives this evening. And he's the one that will be doing the questioning. And so we expect him in for his shift in a few hours. We're happy to make you comfortable until then. So what kind of chairs are in the room that we're in? Um, fairly standard desk chairs. That's what you're sitting in. So is it Maeve and I in one room and the and the guys in another room or are we all together? No, no, just the two of you in one room and then them in the other. You haven't seen them since you've been brought back for questioning. So you don't know where they are. I look at the sergeant and I, do you think we could get some tea? Certainly. Happy to. I, I'm sorry to ask, but do you, do you think I could use the... Uh, the restroom? Of, of course. He gestures out towards the door. Uh, thank you. I direct myself. I, I try... You do not direct yourself. I, well, they direct me. They direct you, yes. And guide. Is there anything I can um, glean from my, my walk to the, to the restroom? It's not very far. So the things that you see are thusly. When you walk out the door with the, of course, assistance and the um, direction of a police officer. It's very kind of them. You walk into, you take a, take a right. They, they sort of, bar not barricade you, but they force you to walk right. You do so. You walk to near, about halfway down the hall where there's another officer standing there watching you approach. He directs you to the bathroom. That is the extent of your visual. You see the inside of a hallway. So there's no other doors or anything? Oh, like yeah, no, no, totally. Anything can, that... You can see that there are other doors and other hallways here. You just can't physically get and you can't do anything other than see them, that they exist. Nothing that would have the same, if there's any lettering or on our door or anything, that would deter, like, also look like a vestibule and it's not an interrogation room, that the guys might be in. And they could be in a room, that room. They could be in a doorway down there in that room. It's tough to say. Um, the, so the this police station is built like a lot are, which are to be... In effect, not mazes, but difficult to make out what's what when you're inside of them. That's the whole point. Do I only see the two police officers? At this point, that? yes, before you hit the bathroom, yeah. Okay, I'll uh, I'll go in the bathroom. Is there a window or, any, or anything in there? Hell no. <laughs> is there a <laughs> window in the bathroom? I was trying it. <laughs> what, what is this? What is this, a, a, a spaghetti western? No. 
to tie a horse to it. And, uh, well, I was trying. Uh, listen, gotta do what I gotta do. All right, I will uh, use the restroom. I will take my time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, basically once you're done, five minutes, ten minutes, whatever it ends up being, uh, anything over 10 minutes, just advise me because clearly someone will just come in and get you. Yeah, no, it would not be. I don't I don't want to be I, I don't want to be obvious that I'm, you know, taking my my time. You finish your time in the bathroom and then get basically corralled back into the room. Tea arrives. Uh, it smells really good. Um, it's a peppermint tea. Mm-hmm. The aroma sort of wakes sort of wakes you up. For you, for you gentlemen, um, very similar arrangements are made should you need to utilize the facilities. Um, you get the clear impression that you're not going anywhere. Yeah. You get that You get that probably within the first 30 minutes, Jack. Like, all right, we were asked for questioning and no one has come in to question us. I, I got you, buddy. Mm-hmm. This is a, this is a, why don't you sit here for a yeah, while and, yeah. and let chill, us do. Chill out. You chill out a little bit. Um, that said... I'll probably start singing at some point. Okay. I'm going to start humming, humming a tune. Well, yeah, or a praise or, you know. Well, the, there are two very different things there. My, my devotional. Ooh, okay. So take us through your devotional while you're, while you're there in the uh, waiting room with uh, Lillian. What's that like? It's mostly just a song. Oh, and Slander. Slander and yeah. I hang out. And it's going to be an Oclo, so it'll be in a language they don't understand. It's not just a language they don't understand. It's a strange harmonizing language. Right. Right. Which goes well with singing. It certainly does. Um, It's a little strange to hear in the room. Um, This is a little... uh, Probably vibrates her eardrums. (laughs) Right. Exactly. So it's not unsettling so much for you, Lillian, but it is strange to watch sound come out of her mouth that likely should not. Um, It's like the way I, I will put it to you like this. It's like if somebody came up to the to the side of your ear and they hit two tuning forks together and you hit you heard these different vibration vibrational tones as she sings um that's just, that's as close to what i can confer to it like yeah i, I just sit and uh, and watch her in in amazement yeah i mean i'm probably picked a spot on the floor and i'm probably kneeling and you know with the snake okay it's during this time, during your um, one of your, uh, we'll just say, changes in the register, uh, that the uh, door opens and one of the police officers comes in. Um, and you're pretty well into it. Not that you're completely out of perception of, of you know, you're not out of your, your mind and that you don't see the different or hear or feel the different presence in the room. He looks extremely panicked. When he comes in, I'll I'll pause and look over. Where did you get a snake? I, I I've had it. He flees from the room. Oh. The door slams again. Ooh, I go check the door. Is it locked? Yep. Fuck. Oh man, I'm probably just laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, you hear a lot of footsteps and a lot of concerned voices. Hmm. You ladies start to hear that too. Doctor and Sam, Hmm. following the tracks is not difficult by any means. They lead sort of where you're expecting them to lead. Mm -hmm. And that is the Nairobi police station. Uh, When you arrive, there is a, well, a ruckus, one could say. All around the police station, there are people who seem to be in a very agitated state and some of them are carrying torches, not flashlights, but torches. And it looks like they've broken through the front door of the police station. I make a very quiet O face. There are now bodies of people surging into the police station. I will put my arm out and just kind of like put my, my forearm past the doctor's chest and I will back us into whatever nearby alleyway happens to be there. And I guess we will witness the breakdown of society briefly. 
Never antagonize the mob, Doctor. Ever. Well, that <laughs> every mob I've ever met is so stupid they don't need antagonization. They do it themselves. Sam, I would like you to make me a hard spot hidden mole. Hey, that's a three uh, out of 85. Well, a three out of 85 is definitely a hard success. It's an extreme success. I will say this to you. One of the things that you pick up about the people moving into the police station is that many of them are dressed in the same similar red and white robes as you saw previously in the streets. It's the cult. They're here. So I've been in this police station before. Uh, Yeah. How many floors is it? Just uh, one. This is very bad, Doctor. Our, our people are in there, and they're clearly going for them. Doc holds up the little bird cage with the cloth over it. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's the time for that, Doctor. Stay here. I look for a way to get uh, some elevation. Yeah, that's going to be tricky, especially where you're at, unfortunately. Uh, where the police station is located... Um, it's a long, it's a long building. It's built along uh, one of uh, many of these uh, open areas. And so there really isn't, there's a park sort of behind you, but there's no point of elevation nearby. Well, so can I, they're charging in the front and I, I know I've been around, I've been around this building already. Like I know where their trash is and all the other stuff. So mm -hmm. I will jog around the building to like, decide I, outside of range of the mob yeah I'm going to try to get on top of the police station okay that'll end up being a climb roll uh, inside our investigators have a whole different problem now that's a 19 out of 82 okay so the climb roll really isn't an issue for you you're able to climb on top of the police station using a very simple method yeah, I had like a drain pipe or something yeah, I'm looking for skylights, outlets, chimneys, windows, like anything up here that would allow entrance into the police station. Mm -mm. Nope. Okay. No skylights. Okay. Not with the African sun, my friend. Sure. What about? Um, I don't. I don't. I mean, I'm guessing. I'm not looking for like HVAC, but I imagine like they have to handle. I, I don't know what air what airflow tech you used in the 1920s. Like you're. I have no idea. <laughs> But the, the reason I'm looking for like, I'm looking for a way in that it won't get me run over by a mob, basically. So if I can get to like the other side of the building and hop down and get to a door, something yeah, like that. Or a window. That. Or a window, yeah. Okay. I'll consider you um, uh, attempting to find a place of ingress. Yes, that's my plan. There is what sounds like a stampede of voices and feet outside your room. Both of the rooms. And there's no windows in the rooms? There is not. Um, I take one of the chairs and block it underneath the doorknob. Okay. And then back myself up against the wall. Okay. I pull out my knife. Or my, um, my curved blade that I brought with. You pull out your knife. knife. Gentlemen, you hear the pounding of fists on the door. And it's not just one, it's two, it's three. It's a lot of people. Well, this is problematic. You start seeing the wood of that door flex inward. And the frame starts to shake. Okay, what kind of chairs are in here? Uh, just regular wood chairs. And yeah. the desk. And... Mm-hmm. Yep. Push the desk up against the door. Give us a little more time. Okay. You push the desk against the door. Um, you start seeing the door come clear of the frame break the chairs yep yep okay smash the chairs yep. that's easy enough yeah get a... it gives you a simple club like mm -hmm. weapon the door gives way the table flips over it gets pushed aside you hear it creak as it runs across the the, the hard floor and people begin streaming into this room with torches and small weaponry. Well, we're gonna have to fight back. You are likely going to have to fight back. 
Um, so between the two of you, I know that Mr. Drummond is going to go first. He's going to be on 80, if memory serves correctly. Yeah, 80. It's not good when the keeper knows your initiative already. <laughs> but I've had some practice at this point. Jack, you're on, what, 65? Yes. No, 60. 60, okay. So at this point, there are no pistols or right. firearms. So we don't have to worry about that. So are they banging on our door, too? Not just yet, but they will be. But we can hear it? Oh, yeah. I want to begin casting a spell. Okay. It, it can't be a secret from me, so what no. spell is it? <laughs> it's the um, Contact Serpent Servitor. Okay, so Serpent Servitor takes how long to cast? Four rounds. Four rounds, okay. Uh, so that one, if memory serves correctly... 5 MP, 1 D3 sand. Yeah. Okay. So spend your 5 MP. Let's roll your sand. We'll roll this HP Lovecraft sand die. Uh, okay, so that is... All sand rolls are half. That's two points of sand that you lose. Yep. Um, now, you lost sand last night. Mm -hmm. You have not had a chance. This is not a brand new day. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to temporary insanity, you're still on the same clock as you were mm -hmm. from last game. Okay. Um, I say that because, is it seven total sand you lost mm -hmm. last time? Yep. Okay. So what is your current sand? I am at 26. Before the loss. Oh, I was at 28. Okay, so you would have been at 35? Yeah, I think so. So here's what I'm going to do. Hey, I still got one more sand to lose before I get temp sand. <laughs> do you? Yeah, you said seven. I just lost two. That's nine. Sure, but it's 20% of the... Oh. current sand you start at. Yes. So if you were at 35... Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So you were on the edge of temporary insanity anyway. So casting the spell will drive you temporarily insane. Which is always fun. Would I know that? No, hell no you would okay, not. I wouldn't know that. You would not know that. All you would know is you're on a knife's edge as far as your, you know, sensory perceptions go. And you're asking for... Big Daddy Yig's help. And he's going to deliver. Okay. Bam. Yep. I am going to play an Empowered Hand of Fate for you. Okay. This will not keep you from being temporarily insane. Right. That's not what this is. Okay. We'll let that simmer while you cast. Uh, so for you, Miss Lane, Maeve drops to her knees and she starts elevating her voice. And when she reaches up, sort of seeming to gesture or to implore something, she starts giving off this energy, like a light comes to her. It comes from with, within her robes outward. And you can see this, you can finally see the thing that she keeps shrouded all the time, which is the extent to which her flesh is no longer recognizably human. Her arms just past the elbow and up to her shoulders are all just filled with these beautiful glistening scales. You get the full ride of all of that. You hear her elevate her voice and call out in a tongue you can't possibly understand. She pleads with something. You watch as she pleads. You see her eyes get go from this golden to this red color. And a mask of hatred just sort of falls down over her face. Her face twists in this, not corrupted so much, but just this, this anger and this painful visage. And the room shakes not from the stampede of people, not from some strange, unexplainable earthquake happening. The room shakes from the power of her voice, and it terrifies you. Is it similar to like when I screamed and blew out the windows? Probably. But I've seen her cast for the her servitor before. It for you functionally for us here. It's not about 
you losing sand or having okay. to make a sand test. That, that's not what this is. It's just the situation itself. It is someone you know who has the ability to call out to powers you don't understand. And to you, it looks like they have lost control of themselves. Well, my back's already against the wall and facing the door. I'm assuming, she, are you facing the door too? Yeah, I'm probably okay. several steps in front of you. I'm, I'm watching her. And do we have a... I know we have the chair in front of the door, but mm-hmm. do we have a desk in that room too? Yeah. Okay, well then I will take it and push that in front of the door as well. If, I, if I'm if i able to walk with the room shaking and everything. Yeah, you're, okay. you're able to walk with the room shaking and all of that. I keep my eye a little... I try to keep my eye and and I mean, it's hard mm-hmm. not to because, you know, light and... An angry yeah. face and, and stuff like that going on. Mm-hmm. So I'm <laughs> carefully watching as I'm like trying as quickly as I can to push that table against the door and then go back to my spot. <laughs> okay. All right, Mr. Drummond yep. on 80, if you would please for us, uh, you are being, I'll just let you know that the four people who are entering the room, their plan is to try to, to tackle and, and, and likely shish kebab you. So when they come in and, and bowl over the desk, do any of them, like, fall or lose their balance or anything? Hell no. <laughs> I'm going to pick the one with the sharpest knife and uh, beam him across the head and shoulders. Sure. That's a failure. 65 over 31. You make a... You both make fighting brawl rolls. He swings on you. You swing on him. Both miss. Jack, you're going to go before this guy or these three other men in the room. Okay, I'm going to uh, brain somebody. That sounds like a fantastic idea. Oh, man. That is 79 over 75, so I miss. Okay. Uh, You know what? No, I'm going to spend four points of luck to hit. Okay. So I will make a fight back roll for this gentleman. I used the word gentleman really, really lightly. Uh, He fails that roll. What's the damage on a club? I'm going to say it's probably a D4. Okay. Plus, if you have a damage bonus. No, I do not. Two. Okay. You brain somebody with a table leg or a chair leg. Hey, is uh, the room shaking? It's starting to, yes. Just one room. It's not the room shaking so much as um, that you can hear with the door open now, even up over all of the people in this place causing noise. You can hear her down the hallway. Well, we just got to hang in there for a little bit longer. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So let's see here. A couple of fighting brawl rolls. So you're each going to get two of these cultists on you. So you'll be able to make fight back rolls. So we'll start with um, you, Drummond, and then Mm -hmm. we'll move to Jack. So if you'd like to make dodge or fight back, you just have to let me know. And then if you're going to dodge or fight back against both of them, you're going to lose, you're going to gain a disadvantage die on the second one. Right. I'm going to dodge. Okay. On the first one. Nope, not going to dodge that one. 63 over 50. Okay. And the second one, I'm still at disadvantage? Or Absolutely. Are. Yep. And that is an 81 over 50. So I failed to dodge either one. Okay. So you're going to end up taking two points of damage from one of these guys with a knife. Mm-hmm. Um, the second one misses you. Jack? All right. I'm going to dodge both of them. Okay. That is, first one is 13 under 89. Okay. You dodge. Uh, second one is 40 under 89. Okay. Yeah, uh, you dodge both the attacks. Sam, you find a window. Okay, great. Uh, uh, I'm guessing it's closed. Is it? The- yeah, it's definitely closed. Okay, but is, is it not? It's not barred or anything, right? It's not barred. No, it's an it's a high window, uh, likely to vent for all the heat. Okay. Um. So there's two questions going on in my head, and when I saw mm-hmm. them rush the the doors, I don't know like if there's you know, panes of glass or like if it's kind of an open thing or if it's very closed off on the inside. I just don't know if I saw other officers in there. Yeah, you would have. Did I see what happened to them? Yeah, they got bowled over. Okay. Then I am just going to come 
into this window. I will brace myself against the wall and slide slide my way in. All right, easy peasy. There's really not much of a roll for it. The w- window's not locked, so once you open it, you can easily slide in. Uh, the landing is going to need likely probably a probably a climb roll. Climb roll, jump roll, whatever you want. Probably climb because you're not actually jumping in. Sure. That's a 31 under 82. Okay, so there's no damage roll for you falling as you land, <laughs> unsurprisingly, on your feet. Uh, and upon landing, you hear a sound you don't want to hear. It's not the people. It's the harmonizing vocaling going on somewhere nearby here. And it, it, it gets around inside your eardrum, and it's very loud. Yeah, this is going to get really bad really fast. Uh, where did I? Where did I? Where did I come in? Where? Uh, so you seem to have entered on the backside of the police station, um, but you are seeing other people in the hallways here. You're actually watching police officers get like gang tackled. Okay. Do I do I see any officers that have armed themselves and seem to be trying to resist this mob? Yeah, yeah, you're starting to hear, um, you're starting to hear police officers call, call for help. Okay. And on the tail end of your landing, you probably also hear someone say in Swahili, "Don't, I'll shoot." That's what I wanted to hear. Okay, I will lower the hat a bit, secure this thing to my head. I will wheel my shotgun up, and I enter the hallway. And I, I look for the mob. Okay. You enter the hallway. And down this hallway, probably 15 feet or so, there are two or three of these men who are surrounding a police officer. Okay. Then I will do my best to liberate the officer. I'm going to rush them. And with kind of a, I guess a... I'll use one of their bodies to stop my forward momentum to push them back away from the officer. And when they're reeling, I will unload barrel one and then barrel two slightly to the left of them. Okay. All right. So give me two um, firearms rolls. I need my shotgun. Rifle, wow. shotgun rolls. What did I say? 36 under 74. Okay. So that is a hard success. And then my second shot is a 12 under 74. Okay. So I won't make you roll damage for them given the amount of hit points that they have because I know the base damage is the shotgun. A couple of trigger pulls is going to clear up this hallway section pretty quickly. Get on your feet! Stand your ground! Kick one of the officers. Uh, you'd hear that, Jack. Okay, you'd hear, I, you'd, you'd I hear the that. shotgun. Okay. Um, yeah, cool. there's uh, m- multiple concussive sounds that go through this space. Lillian, you'd hear that too. In fact, you'd hear that pretty close. The next round, maybe you're still casting. You're sort of in a different loop of actions now because you don't really control yourself at this point. In fact, that's a good question. Let's see how long you're uncontrollable for. Seven rounds. Yes! So it's at this point at the top of the second round, Lillian, that the rumbling in your feet gets pretty serious. It starts to get pretty serious. Is it making me lose my, like, balance? No, because you sort of pinned yourself against a corner Mm -hmm. to sort of keep yourself from falling over. Um, The door to your uh, waiting room, your your interview room, is beginning to buckle. And you can hear voices outside of it now. Uh, And they are aggressive and unfriendly and... They're interested in coming inside. They're not even going to wipe their feet at the mat either. They're just jerks. Yeah, bullshit. Then I will go plant myself in front of Miss O'Shea. Okay. You do so. Mm-hmm. May you do some things. We'll talk about that later. Mr. Drummond. Yep. You have two gentlemen here. I use that word very loosely. What would you like to do? I've got to keep fighting. I've got to keep trying to... 
I'm not good at this, but, you know. <laughs> I will spend eight points of luck to make that 39 into a 31 and make it a success. Oh, fantastic. That's a fighting brawl, I assume? Yes, it is. All right. Yeah, you're going to hit. Two points. Okay. Very well. That is your action, Jack. Um, I'm going to lay into the same one I hit before. Okay. That is an eight. Oh. Under 89. If oh, only, sorry, if, under 75. If only that weapon impaled. I know. So I that's could a, use it. That's a 77 for me, which means you hit if you would like to roll damage. That's three. Okay. You did two the last time? Yep. Yep. Okay. So he drops. And now the other three gentlemen in the room get to go. We'll start with you, Mr. Drummond. It's dodge time. It is. Actually, you don't need to dodge that because he does not hit. No. And the other one misses too. I should have fought back. Damn it. Could have. I could have. But you but said you were not. dodging. Yeah. That's, That's right. I'm going to fight back. Are you now? Yeah. Do so. 38 under 75. I rolled an 8. Oh, uh, crap. So I'm, I'm going to end up sticking you. Yeah. And you're going to get a nice little bit of, of let's see what's a bladed weapon of that size is probably a 4. That's one point of damage. Yay. Just, just one. Um, okay, so as an aside, Doctor, are you watching this from the outside? Uh, he, yes, Doc is watching this from the outside with a look of horror, but not a lot he can do. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Doc looks for a, basically a safe place to squirrel himself away. The park. Uh, yep. So he heads there and finds a place to hide. Yeah, there's a, a bench and a, tr a couple of trees, perhaps a bush here. You could you could probably get some cover from to keep from being consumed in it. Oh, good. All right. Uh, Sam, uh, having cleared most of this hallway from cultists, uh, you have a few choices to make. You could go back towards the front of the police station or you could go sort of not deeper but just to the other side of the uh, police station you have you have a hallway behind you at this point that you could go through and then you have a hallway ahead what are the other officers doing they're trying to get up there are a lot of them are dinged up and scraped up and some people are bleeding I will help one of them up and say in Swahili to him uh, where mm -hmm. Where are the people they came for? Uh, he points across the hall in, in the questioning rooms. Is he carry? Is this is this officer carrying a gun? No, he's carrying uh, what is effectively a baton. Can't lose the station, and I will. I will make a show of uh, bravado, and I will turn around and hustle down the hallway, and I'll make it very clear that I am looking upon them as if they are total cowards if they don't come with me. <laughs> Sure. Okay, you march off down the hall. Uh, as you do so, I will. You get about twenty feet or so, and you encounter th four men who are about finished about finishing breaking down the door inside one of these rooms. That's where the sound is coming from. It's coming from inside the room. Oh, well then I, I'm going to do something that I've, I've only done an alarm before, but I've never been, been able to do so in official capacity. I will pull out my police whistle and plant it in the side of my mouth and I will blow as hard as I possibly can and level my shotgun at them and make it very, very clear what's about to happen. Okay. Okay. Well, if they don't look at me, then I just pull the trigger R repeatedly. They're fairly intent with what they're doing. Yeah, um, go ahead and make a um, rifle shotgun roll. Yep. Uh, so that is a 40 under uh, 74. Mm -hmm. And then second barrel is a 59 under 74. You essentially saw most of the hallway in half. 
the nice part about the effectiveness of a shotgun in a 10 foot wide hallway is it's very difficult to get out of the way of. Mm. Um, for you, Lillian, the shotgun blasts are getting closer and closer. And then you see basically pellet shot perforate part of the door that you're watching. How far away is that from from me? 10 feet. Not far. I prepare myself to go dive on Miss O'Shea if something comes, yeah, mm-hmm. if it starts coming through that door. Okay. Uh, back to the fight in the uh, other the other questioning room. Uh, Mr. Drummond, it's your action. I'll brain the guy I brained the last time. Sure. Nope. 84 over 31. Okay. He's going to fight back. And he fails. Check. Um, I'm going to hit the guy that's just shanked me. Okay. That is 17 under 89. Yep. Go ahead and roll damage. One. One measly point. <laughs> One measly point of damage. At the end of this round, the ground underneath your feet, Lillian, begins to crack. Like full-on separation earthquake crack. Like in just one part of the room or all over? Right now in just one part of the room. I will go to a different part of the room where it is not cracking. Um, um, so it's cracking like in front of me or behind me? Where, where is it? Um, basically, it's it's cracking right behind you, right in front of Maeve. And when you turn around to sort of find a safe place, um, the entirety of her cheeks are covered in blood. Like she's bleeding out of her eyes. Um, and she hasn't stopped. It doesn't seem to bother her. Yeah. That is something to discuss later. Um, I will move. Um, if I'm facing the door, I will move to... Is the door on the right-hand side of the room? Uh, for you, it's on the left. So I'm facing it. It's on the left-hand side. Um, I will... And is there a wall? Yeah. Okay. So I will go stand at that wall okay. next to the door... So when they do break in, Mm -hmm. I have a chance to stab them in the face. Certainly. I look forward to that. (laughs) Jack and Mr. Drummond, you begin hearing gunfire in the front of the police station. It's actually a considerable amount of gunfire. It's pistol rounds for sure, Jack, but someone has started shooting. No. Okay. So great. Hopefully it's (laughs) the good guys. I mean, I mean. Let's put it this way. It took them several minutes to uh, actually make it to the cop house. I'm not real keen on their reaction time. Yeah, that's true. Does it make me a first responder? It does actually make you a first responder, (laughs) yes. So that'll come back to you, Sam. You're sort of now in having rushed forward and dealt with these cultists in this hallway that were trying to break down this door. You're sort of in a T So there's now a hallway down to your left. There's the stuff behind you, and there's basically a mess of gore in front of you. So there's no more trying to knock this door down? No, you you literally sawed them all in half. Okay. I I will, uh, I'll approach the door and bang on it. Anybody alive in there? You hear that, Lillian. Do I know it's Sam? Um, Yeah, I assume he's not trying to disguise his voice. I I look like a cop for good. I get closer to the door. Sam? Sam, is that you? Can you open the door? Can they hear each other over me? Uh, it's hard to. I will. I'll try the door. There's. Uh, it seems to be latched. You have to like undo a a latch on it, but you can get it open. I will. I will get the door open. What the hell's going on in there? <laughs> oh God, no! I'll open the door. Um. So in front of you, Mount Vesuvius awaits. Oh, good God! What is she doing? You don't know. No, um, we need to exit the room, though. I'm sure Mabel will be fine. We can't just leave her here. We don't have to leave her. We just need to leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go find the others. Uh, watch your step. We can come back to her. Yeah, stepping out of this room with Sam uh-huh, is... There- is, is- yeah, uh, there's bodies. There's bodies all over the place. Is there is there a gun on any of them? There is not a gun on them. No. Otherwise, they would have just shot into the room. That's true. 
What kind of fucking cultists are these? Apparently ones that don't carry guns. Back down in the room where Jack and, and Mr. Drummond are fighting for their lives. Um, those cultists are going to get a chance to go now. We are heading that way, just so you know. Well, you, yeah, you will. Um, so no role necessary for you to dodge or to fight back yet. Mr. Drummond will get there. Uh, now there is. I will fight back. Okay. 21 under 31. That's pretty good. It's not going to keep you from getting hit, though. He, he had a hard. Um, I rolled a two. Yeah, I'm not I'm not fighting that. Um, okay. Yeah, okay, I take damage. Uh, yes, you will. That is an impale with a bladed weapon. So you're going to take four plus... Four plus... Plus one, so you take five. Okay. You get stabbed, like, in the kidney. You can feel your side clench up when he stabs you. All right, Jack, uh, let's see if you have to dodge or fight back. No. That's a 90. Uh, You get swiped at. Uh, You see Drummond get stabbed. Can I fight back anyhow? Uh, Yeah, absolutely. You're totally totally allowed to fight back. (laughs) Nope. That's a 90. Yeah, so you swing. Nothing happens. Um, let's see Dueling here. Nineties. So, some things are going to happen now. So, Lillian, Sam, you're moving forward through the police station in hopes to get your uh, compatriots out. And um, I'm going to need you to make dex rolls. Oh God, I got an eight. That's good. Of course, I got an eighty-five out of ninety. I'm going to spend a hand of fate for you, Lynn, and make that a success. Thank you, Patreon. Oh, well, it was a success. You mean a greater success? Yes. Okay. <laughs> because hard is going to be required. As it should be. <laughs> what happens, the reason why you're making the dexterity roll, is the ground beneath your feet violently moves upward without your permission. Really anybody's permission for that matter. The walls around you crumple. Uh, they become sort of marshmallowy and then collapse. You are moving forward as fast as you possibly can at this point as the earth beneath your feet erupts and the hallway begins to fill with a noxious vapor. So that is happening. That's a thing. Doc, outside at the park, Mm. you see something you don't want to see, which is the building trembles. It's not, buildings are not supposed to shake like that. No, that's not a good structural sound shake. You have some thoughts? Hmm. None of them are good. Nope. (laughs) There's only a couple things that would cause a building to shake like that. And I don't remember Jack toting around any dynamite. (laughs) So, and I didn't hear an earth shattering kaboom. Right. Did any of these cultists show up in a vehicle of any sort? Uh, no. Okay. Nope, they're on foot. There are vehicles nearby. Are there? Yep. All right. Well, since everyone's going to now be paying attention to the giant imploding, exploding police station, <laughs> Doc is going to arrange for transport. It's very poetic of you to put. Hmm. <laughs> okay, so you can. are you going to go appropriate a vehicle? I think so. Doc does not want to do so, but that is what is going to happen. This isn't the first car you've stolen either. It really isn't. In fact, Doc makes note of that as he's like, oh, fixing it to like, is, it my, is my new car here now? What is this? All right, so we'll say that you're going to begin um, facilitating the escape plan, which is a fantastic idea. Huh. So inside... Mr. Drummond, it's going to be your action on 80. You've recently been stabbed. You're wondering how you got yourself into this mess. Oh, I know how I got myself into this mess. And I regret it every day. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I got to get this fool out of my side. Uh, That'll be an 18 under 31. Ooh, that's a good roll. That's a good roll. He is going to fight back. And failed to do so, so roll damage. Three. Ooh, okay. All right, so it's five total. So he collapses. Uh, this guy that stabbed you with what looks like little 
more than like a chef's knife. That's fine. I'll take it. Well, I mean, it's got your <laughs> blood on chance. it, so. Uh, so it's it's now one on one for each one of you. Mm-hmm. Um, Jack. Um, I will attempt to uh, hit him again. Not a bad idea. Fifteen under seventy-five. Okay. His fight back is not going to be high enough or uh, low enough in this case. So go ahead and roll damage. Two. So that's three. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, you bonk him. <laughs> bonk. Oh hey. Um, and then now Sam and Lillian get to go. Uh, so you are moving forward very, very quickly, Sam. We're running as fast as our legs will carry us. You're starting to see some bright spots. I guess maybe that's sort of subjective. Um, at the end of this hallway, you see that there are two police officers. And these two uniformed police officers are firing into what looks like the lobby or vestibule area. This is the area. So this is the area where the where, when I asked that one officer where they were holding the people. This is the area he pointed to, right? Yes. Okay. Do I see any more of the cultist types or people in the hallways, in rooms? Do I see any open rooms, any broken rooms? Well, as you move up to your right, you're going to encounter a, a fight going on. Okay. So as you move up, because you're obviously continuing to move away from the collapsing building portion. Yes, the, 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 the gas and the hate and the hate and the hell mm. that's coming. Yes, I'm running yes. away from the hell. Yes, as you're running on your right, you are going to make Drummond and Jack in one of these rooms, and it looks like they're fighting for their lives. Okay. I will wheel to the right. Mm. I will blow my whistle again, spit it out, and say, Hit the deck! And I will point my shotgun into the room. Because if I'm okay. if I'm coming in behind the the, the 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 baddies, I'm assuming that they'll both see me. Yeah, absolutely. The, you'd be able to make out Sam as he moves forward. You'd also be able to make out uh, the shotgun, Mister Drummond. That's not. It's not hard to see that. And he's dressed like a cop, so I'm not going to go down forward. I'm going to fall backwards. Okay, Jack. As this is all going on. Is this fight to the death with the, these cultists is going on? You see um, someone that looks a lot like Sam in a cop's uniform, basically running past the open doorway, and he seems to slow, and he calls out for you to hit the deck, and that's when you see the double barrel shotgun come up. Yeah, I drop. <laughs> um. So yeah, Sam, I'm I'm gonna say that uh, you're gonna need a hard success to pull this off. Sure. So I'm gonna do what I can to get whatever advantage I can. So when I when I point into the room, I'm gonna put the butt of it right up against one of like the first one that's there, and I'm gonna try mm-hmm. to like, you know, I'm gonna point up in a way like toward toward his friend basically. Um, so I'm gonna get real personal with this shot. Okay. Uh, point blank affords me advantage, right? It does. That's good. Because I'm going to hopefully hard success, you said. You bet. The last time I took a point blank shot, I think I, I think I almost cut Jack in half. So we'll see what happens. Mm. I don't have any luck to spend. Okay, so that is. Oh, I get an advantage. Hold on. <laughs> nope, that's not going to do it. Okay, so that's a 56 under 74. You know what? I'm going to push the rule. Okay, so I, as your keeper, I'm going to remind you that push rolls can be potentially very bad. Well, you didn't tell me. So it's not a it's not a miss, but I'm guessing that like I'm going to end up hitting somebody if I don't do this, right? Yeah, and there are going to be consequences for your potential inability to um, properly connect. Um, so yeah, I'm going to, um, I can't afford to wound my friends, so I'm going to push the roll. Okay. In order to make sure that I... Um, definitely make the shot uh i will reach out with my other hand and grab Mm -hmm. the the assaulting cultist by the collar and like pull pull him to the shotgun while i pull the trigger oh boy that's a 33 out of uh 74 that is a hard success 
Fantastic. <sighs> Gentlemen, uh, those of you in the room, having just cleaned up recently, um, are showered with uh, an amazing... You know, you find it a little amazing how much blood the human body can hold. Um, but this is like a geyser goes off in your general direction. Uh, the cultist that Sam grabs by the back of the, basically by the back of its robe, um, is sawn in half. And when it does, it sort of burps its way out towards the two of you. Uh, so sinew and organs and blood flop against your face and chest. It might be the grossest thing you've seen and had to experience. Now, that is one trigger pull. Are you taking the other? The other cultist is still there, right? Yes. Okay. Then yes, I will I will make the other trigger pull. Okay. With a ten. I wish it was a one, but it's it's a ten. The the reason why we're not rolling damage, just so the audience is aware, um the cultist mooks have five hit points in Pulp Cthulhu. They're meant as sort of just fodder. And this is what they're turning into is like <laughs> this police station is now a charnel house. And uh, the second blast robs you, Mr. Drummond, it robs you of your hearing. That's, that's fine. <laughs> it's really not. <laughs> it is fortunate, though, because it means that when the two of you begin to extricate yourself in this room, you won't hear the squishing beneath your feet. Are you guys okay? We gotta get the hell out of here. This building is coming down. Huh? <laughs> I grab him. <laughs> Sir, cops are shooting down that way and there's poison gas going from that way, so we have to go toward the front. Oh, good. Huh? <laughs> just, just stay with me. Where's Lillian and Maeve? Uh, sh- in hell. I'm right behind Sam, so oh. you can see me. Uh, Maeve is down at the... Uh, Maeve's down at the other room, casting something, and we can't go down there because we aren't going to be able to breathe. Out of that gas that exists, because remember, there are lights on in the police station. It's not dark in here. Out of that gas and rubble, you see it, Jack. You see a thing move through the back of the hall. Oh, God, that thing. There is an enormous creature moving at the back of the building. It takes up the hallway. All right, go, go, go. (laughs) I will I will get in front and I will begin running uh, as I reload. Doc, would you make me a um, mechanical repair roll? Sure. <coughs> oh, Lord. Ah, uh, yeah, not even close. Um, let's see, that's a 76 over 10. All right. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I'm going to spend a hand of paper and make that a success. <laughs> Thank you, Patreon. <laughs> The car burbles to life. It's at this point that most of our investigators hit the front door area, which is essentially a, uh, well, it's it's a big clump of bodies at this point between cultists who were fighting police hand to hand. And then seemingly the police decided to finally start firing back. The group is able to get past this barrier point. Um, while the police shout after you, they're not able to stop you. And seeing that you're with a police officer, they they just assume you're fleeing. Which is true. Um, after you break the, you know, break out back into the street, you see you see the doctor in a car nearby. Brilliant son of a bitch. Yeah, what's a little Grand Theft Auto to add to the... Uh... <laughs> you know, since they're all occupied here, we should go back to the hotel and get our stuff. That was That's exactly what I'm my plan. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Don't a... worry, guys, I got this. Well, <laughs> we figure you... Did, yeah. You we, all... we figure at least you know where we will be when you're done going insane. You all get the hell out of here. I'll do what I can to come back with Maeve. All right. Okay. So the four of you, which is sort of fortuitous because that's all the auto can hold, 
regularly head back towards the hotel. So we'll end with this. Mr. Shea, the work which needs to be done here is not over. That's clear. The vision in your mind's eye that you have of yourself kneeling, calling for the father servitor to show his displeasure with their ruinous tainting of his land, um, that vision holds pretty true. And that snake, that special snake from the father is quickly consuming corpses and filling this space with a very toxic gas. One which seemingly has no ill effects on you. You see him now, the father, much more clearly. He stands beside you in the room, nodding in his approval. And he looks out towards the wreckage, this police station, which once was, and says, gather what you need and come into the countryside with me. We have much to discuss. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. I will. He walks steps, really, back down through the hole which was made and into the earth, sliding his, his form down very deep into the earth. The blood on your face doesn't bother you. It's a warning. You're at war. And that is where we'll close this episode. So thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Mask of I'm certain Nairobi will never be the same. Thank you and good night.